had the uh, privilege for now but 20 years to know Pastor uh, Joe, uh, knew his wife Andrea, who is now going home to be with the Lord. Uh, really, that will be a year ago in, I guess, March. Am I right, Joe? And uh, Joe now is, um, they're continuing the ministry over there, uh, the school and uh, the church. And uh, we're going to be going over, uh, doing a mission trip at the end of March. Uh, Kevin who you saw in uh, the video will be going back with us. And uh, Pastor Joe is going to come and share from the Word of God maybe a little bit about the ministry. So Pastor Joe, we want to welcome you this morning. Give him a group good welcome. Good morning. Um, I know the pastor is not here, but I just want to thank the pastor and the leadership of the church for giving me this opportunity to share the word of God with the congregation. Um, it's always humbling to see Pastor Bill sit right in front of me and <laughs> I'm preaching the word of God. As he rightly mentioned, for the past 20 years that um, uh, I've known him, he has mentored and supported our ministry from the beginning. And it's a blessing that he still gives me the opportunity to share the word of God and to, his, to see him sit right in front of me and Pastor Bob, <laughs> also my senior minister in the, where, uh, in the Lord, also sitting to hear. Uh, I just want to thank all of you for the opportunity and then the love um, that you've given to me and then the ministry that we have in Ghana as well. Um, I have my friend Katie here, who is my boss. When we started our school for children with disability, we started with eight children with disability and ten students from University of Southern California. And she was one of the students who came and helped us start the school. So I, I'm really thankful for your help and your support. This morning, I just want to share um, a personal word with you. As Pastor Bill said, my wife passed this March. And as my wife passed, she was the main um, supporter of our ministry. She was the American who stayed in America and then go around churches to help raise funds for the school. And I live in Ghana and see to the operations in Ghana. So when he suddenly passed um, in the month of March this year, it was a little scary for me how to be able to continue to raise funds and how I'll be able to keep the school going. Our son is 17 years and in the final year, now at the USA and I'm in Ghana, the mother is gone. How can the son continue his education here without um, the two of the parents not being around? It was really a tough time for me, but the Lord has been good and the Lord has seen us through up to this time. And the word I'm about to share is the word that God gave me that strengthened me. And I believe that as I share this word with you, there's someone here that the word will also strengthen that person. I pray that your situation might not be the same as mine, but um, as we pray for the Holy Spirit to minister the word, the Holy Spirit will minister to each and everyone here. And even I believe that those in the house who are not here, the Spirit will touch them, heal and strengthen someone in Jesus' name. Shall we bow down our heads for a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. Lord, we magnify your holy name and we exalt your holy name. We have met because you have brought us here. And you never visit your children without leaving the mark of your presence. I pray that even as I share the word, let your presence be felt minister through me that my hearers will not hear me but they will hear your voice 
Let your word bring comfort. Let your word bring healing. Let your word bring direction and encouragement unto your servant. Father, I thank you for hearing us, for we have prayed in the name of Jesus. And let the saints of God say, Amen. Amen. This morning, um, I've entitled my message, um, Sacrifice of Praise. And I'm reading from the book of Psalm, chapter 34, verse 1 to 3. David said in Psalm 134, 1 to 3, that I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lift. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Amen. We know that to praise God or to bless the Lord is to give him thanks, is to exalt his holy name, appreciate him, and honor his name. It is very easy and natural when things are going on well with us to bless and exalt the Lord, to give him thanks and glorify his name. And we all know, as we read from the scripture, David said he will exalt the Lord at all times. And all times can be every hour, every minute, or every second. All times can be morning, afternoon, or evening. All times can mean bad times or good times. It can mean in sickness or in health, in riches or in poverty. But as we look at the background of the scripture, the Bible um, commentary tells us that David wrote this psalm when he was running away from Saul. And he got to a place called Gath. We can read this, the background in the book of Psalm, chapter, um, 1 Samuel chapter 21, verse 10 to um, chapter 22, 1 and 2. But I just, because of time, I just want to tell the story. When he got to Gath, the king at Gath at that time was called King Achish. And the servants of Achish got hold of David and took him into the house of King Achish and told him, Is this not David, the one the Israelites sang? Saul has killed his thousands and David has killed his ten thousands. So David became afraid at that time that his life is in danger. So the Bible tells us that David pretended being insane and tried scribbling something on the gates and allowing saliva to run down his cheek. So when they presented David before the king, the king was very furious and asked the servants, is it that I have no mad people in my town that you are bringing a mad person into my house? You, I can't allow this person to enter into my house. And that is why the servants took David away from the king, and David got his freedom and ran away. And from there, David got to a place that he hid himself in a cave in the cave of Abdullam. And in that cave, the Bible tells us that 400 men who were in distress, who were in debt, and 400 men who were discontent came around David in that cave. And I imagine 
David become a captain of 400 men in debt, in distress, and in discontent? If he even have to listen to each one's problem a day, it will take him a whole year. And at that moment, David wrote the Psalms that I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be on my lips. I wonder the time that David will get even to bless the Lord. Listening to all these men with their problems. And this tells me that when David entered into that situation, he didn't look at his situation, but he rather turned to God and praised God and blessed him in the midst of the 400 men in discontent. And I can picture David starting a song or raising up a song of praise and the men all joining in one after the other. Because the psalm tells us that let the afflicted rejoice. And that is what gives me that picture. That he was surrounded by people fully afflicted. But as he started praising, praising and then blessing his God, they all joined in one after the other. And they all gathered praising the Lord. There is this lesson that I learned from this. That number one, David tells us that we have to praise God also in bad times. We don't only have to look at the situation when things are going on well with us. I was looking at myself that my wife passed and then I came to the state and then we have the funeral. And that same week, a church in New Jersey invited me to preach there. And I was like, I need somebody to comfort me. <laughs> am I going to share my tears with them? Or what am I going to tell them? But the Lord was good. Just as he has kept us at this time, kept our ministry going, I was able to exhort him, exhort the Lord, and then the congregation, God bless. I just want to encourage someone here that no matter the situation that you are going through, no matter the pain, people might not be able to understand your situation. You can't express yourself well for people to understand you, but you can turn to God and give him the praise. As you praise him, your, play, your praise will af affect the afflicted, and they will join you to uplift the holy name of God. Amen. Amen. When we read the book of Acts, it tells us, um, one of the things that I, I, I want to emphasize in praise is that praise shouldn't be intrinsic. Praise must be extrinsic. Sometimes, anytime I, I, I talk about this, I look at myself, I'm always quiet. I, um, this Christmas, um, my brother-in-law gave me a very nice Nike shoes. And I said, oh, Mark, thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. But I gave a Ghanaian hoodie to another friend, Vince, and Vince always put me to shame. When he opened the parcel, he said, wow, this is awesome. I like it. And then he, <laughs> Vance put his shirt on right in front of everybody and then started taking some steps and everybody was happy at that time enjoying with him 
Oh no, he received the thing. And <laughs> I, I, I think about praise being extrinsic, and I believe that that is how praise is supposed to be. I said, no, I need this wow from Vince in my life to be able to express it. I pray that if you are here and you have that wow in you, after the sermon, you can give me a little bit. Because I believe that every believer needs something like that. To glorify the name of the Lord. That we alone will not enjoy it. But as we enjoy the blessings, our praise will affect others to enjoy with us. I pray that the Lord will touch somebody here this morning. And if you don't have the wow, the Lord will give you also some of the wow in Jesus' name. You can say amen with me. <laughs> I, I believe that that is how praise is supposed to be. Because when Paul and Silas were also captured in prison, the Bible says they prayed in the prison. And they sang hymns. And the other prisoners in the prison with them were listening to them. They were all in prison, but when the two got in, instead of joining them, murmuring and complaining, the two started singing hymns, praising their God. And then the rest, instead of sleeping, they all joined listening. And the Bible said at that time, a miracle happened. The foundation of the prison shook, and the doors opened, and they had their freedom at that time. I believe that that is how praise is supposed to be. When we praise and we praise out loud, we praise out from our spirit, it brings signs and wonders. And I know that as we take the word of God into practice, each one of us can experience that signs and wonders in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. I say, how can we praise? We can praise God by giving him thanks by sharing our testimonies. It might not be any great testimony, but just a little testimony can strengthen somebody's life. We can praise him by singing, as this morning we all enjoy the praise and worship here. I know that if you came here sick or you came here down through the praise and worship, I'm sure you have been touched by the praise team. Amen and amen. We praise him by clapping and dancing, by sharing our gifts and our wealth with others, and also tithing. When you are in a tight situation where everybody thinks that um, you don't have to give, you are in need, I'm sure that is why you have to shame the enemy by giving God your tithe. By letting people know that no matter the situation, you still trust your God. That the one who supplied you, you will give him the 10% or the tithe that is due him. Believing that he can multiply it and then bring it back. Because the enemy wants us to shy away from those things. That is why he put us in a corner that we wouldn't be able to even tithe or give our offering or worship our God. But at that situation, we can show the enemy the way we believe and trust, praising by tithing and sharing whatever we have with one another. Amen. Our praise, David says, must also affect, um, must also cause the afflicted to rejoice. When God does something for us or when we are praising God and it is just ourselves, David is telling us that it's not enough. It must affect others. Your testimony must strengthen somebody. Your testimony must draw some another person even unto Christ. So don't let us just take the blessings of God 
enjoy it on ourselves without letting others benefiting from what the Lord has done for us. And I believe that as we take that steps, more doors will be open for us, and then many people will also benefit from what the Lord has done for us. Amen. Our praise must cause others, our praise must cause others to praise also, as David said in, um, in the Psalms. He said, glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. We must always, as we have in our hearts that we need to win souls unto Christ, I believe that the same passion that we need to have, that others may also praise our living God. Not just inviting them to receive Jesus Christ, but how can we help others also to give him praise? Because one of the things God demands from us is praise. Amen and amen. Why do we have to praise the Lord at all times? We have to give God the praise because it is the will of God for us. Every believer wants to walk in the will of God. But the book of Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18 tells us that give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the word of God in Christ Jesus for us. His will is for us to praise him. So if we want to walk in his will, it is not only walking in holiness and purity and praying. But his will for us is for us to praise him. So in your time of tears, if you cease to praise him, it's a sign that you are not walking in his will for your life. If you want to continue in his will for you, then in pain, you still have to praise him. That is a sign that you are in his will. We have to praise him, number two, because the Lord is enthroned. The Bible says the Lord is enthroned in the praise of his people. When we give him praise, as Psalm 22 verse 3 tells us, that but you are holy, enthroned in the praise of Israel. He is enthroned. When we praise him, we put him at the position where he is supposed to be. In Africa, we... Um, believe in kings in our festivals our kings we put them on in some put them in palanquin and then they carry them and when they come to the deba ground they have special chairs that the kings they sit on the chiefs they sit on and when they sit on people sit under them and that is when they declare their mind and then they are blessing to the whole city or the whole town. When some, anyone is enthroned, like uh, when the president is given the opportunity to give his speech, they give him that audience, and then greater things or his expectation is pronounced for the whole country to uh, follow. I believe that that is how the Bible is telling us, that when we give God the, that position, enthrone him, he declares his blessing upon us. Amen and amen. We have to praise him because we need to approach him with praise. Psalm 100 verse 4 tells us, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Even when you are in pain, and you are going to God in prayer. He says you have to start your prayer with thanksgiving. So if you don't thank, if you don't start with thanksgiving, you can't enter. We need thanksgiving. We need praise. We need exhortation to enter. And that is why we have to, that that is how important praise is in the life of every believer. 
That, that's why I believe David said, in all circumstances, we have to praise him. Number four, so far as there is breath in us, we need to praise him. That is why the Bible says in Psalm 150 verse 6, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise him, the Lord. So far as there is breath in us, the Bible says it's a mandatory that we have to praise him. He said that if man doesn't praise him, he will lift up stones. That doesn't even have life to give him praise. That is how far God is expecting praise from us. The enemy will throw the wrong things at us to shut our mouth, to shut us up from praising our God. But we don't have to listen to, uh, we don't have to heed to the pain that the enemy is bringing. We must heed to what the Lord says. That in all circumstances, so far as we wake up in the morning and then there is breath in us, we ought to give him praise. Sacrifice of praise must be continuous in a believer's life. It shouldn't be just one time thing. As it said in the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. Therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks to his name. Continually we need to offer sacrifices of praise. I know that God knows that there will be pain but even in pain, that we need to praise him. That is why he wrote this um, in the Bible. That we have to offer sacrifices of praise to him always. Which means we don't have to praise depending on the circumstance or what we are going through. And I know that as we heed to the word of God, and we continue praising him at all time and at all circumstances. I believe and declare that as signs and wonders manifested, as Paul and Silas praised the Lord, when we also continue praising him in all circumstances, we will never lack signs and wonders in our lives. There will always be a sign. There will always be a miracle in our lives as we continue to give him the sacrifice of praise. The Lord is good all the time and all the time the Lord is good. Let us all praise him at all time. Amen and amen. Let's bow down our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the word that we have shared. We pray that your word will have its course in our life. Father, Lord, that your servants, will, we will not be only hear us of your word, but we will all be doers of your word. Let your healing manifest. Let your comfort manifest. Let your power manifest. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And let the saints of God say, Amen.